Good morning, church. If I don't shake your hand this morning, I'm not being rude, been a little under the weather. I'm doing elbows this morning. So glad that you are here. I'm glad I'm here. It was a little, a little questionable earlier in the week, but I made it. If you are visiting with us this morning, I hope you feel the Holy Spirit here. That's the greatest thing that anybody ever says to me is that they feel the Holy Spirit when they worship with us. I hope you feel that, and I hope you feel the love of his people in this place. If you are a visitor, uh, there is a, a card in the pocket in front of you. It has a blue stripe says guest. Would love for you to fill that out and meet me after church. I'll be out in the, in the, in the foyer. Would love to meet you. I have a free gift. You don't have to fill that out, but would love for, for you to. I'd love to meet you. Um, if you uh, will, Also, you can just leave it there in your seat if you'd rather do that. So uh, turn with me to Psalm, Billy, Psalm 103. <laughs> and we didn't plan that. God, man, God, well, he's God. When when you said you're going to read out of Psalm 103, I thought, man, Lord, you want to tell us something this morning. Psalm 103, great psalm. There is a song, uh, Trevor, I'm not sure if I've passed it. Where's Trevor at? I'm not sure if I've passed it on to you, but there's a song from this, a song from this psalm. It's hard to say. That we need to do sometime. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Can we just say, say that together? Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our sins, heals all our diseases, who redeems all our life from the pit and crowns us with love and compassion, who satisfies our desires with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. That's the God we're here serving and worshiping this morning. Church, let's pray. Come Holy Spirit, we have invited you I, I sense you're here with us, and I know you live inside of us, but manifest yourself, Holy Spirit, right here in this place. May my words be from you. Speak, Holy Spirit, in power and authority and transform our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, uh, I was reading about, and this, this is not a joke. I, this is a real, real life story I read. There is a hotel in Belgium. Uh, any of you been to Belgium before? I've never been to Belgium. A few, a few of you. A few, a few have been to Belgium. You probably stayed at this hotel. This hotel has, uh, this is true, this is not a joke, I promise, there's no punchline, that you can rent a goldfish for your stay. I'm not sure this is, go ahead and fl fl throw that up. Oh, well, you did, now how did that happen? I got those behind. There we go. There we go. I'm sorry, Lee. I got those back, back, backwards there. I'm not sure that's the goldfish, but that is a goldfish. You can, you can rent a goldfish for the night. Now, here's what's interesting is they rent several, uh, this story I read, they rent several a week, several goldfish. Now, why would you want to rent a goldfish for the night? I think it goes to, now you can back up there, Lee. I think it goes to um, our series that we're in, our sermon series, Got Hope. Got Hope. And uh, today's message is hope for loneliness and discouragement. Did you know that uh, you can be in a room full of people, packed with people, and be lonely and discouraged? It's not about the... Uh, the number of people that you can surround yourself in. You can just go to the mall and just walk around and see people. But loneliness goes to, the, to the, uh, the heart level, to our very soul. When we feel like we're not being heard, like nobody cares, loneliness 
and discouragement. There is um, hope for that. We're going we're gonna to talk about that more in just a moment. Uh, one of the things in our One Kingdom group that I'm part of that's, that's hosting the worship service tonight, by the way, a um, group of uh, pastors and civic leaders in our city that come together, our board, uh, our intention is to just pray for blessing for our city. Um, and one of the things that we actually, the police chief is actually on our, our leadership team. And one of the things that he's showed, uh, told us and that I have seen firsthand is that suicide, there is a spirit of suicide that is, that is um, growing, not, not just nationally, but in our community. Uh, and I know this uh, affects our, our service members quite a bit because of the, the stresses and the things that, that those families are going through. Uh, I was doing a, did a little bit of research on this. Um, uh, I will say that uh, from 1999 to 2017, this stat was it's suicide in the United States has grown by 33% uh, in that period of time. And what is that, 17, 18 years? Uh, in, in 2019, just last year, uh, the United States of America averaged 129 suicides every day. We are a lonely and discouraged people. Now, I know, the thing about suicide, uh, I'm not, this is this passage, I mean, this sermon today is not about suicide, but I, I want to touch on that for just a second. If you've been impacted by that, if you've had a family member or a close friend, that has done that. Uh, here's one thing that uh, infuriates me that comes that can come from the church um, is that if someone commits suicide, they're they're going to hell. The first thing I tell people if they've heard that, if they've asked me about that, is I'd like have them whoever told you that have them show me that. Have them show me that. Did you know that Jesus hung on the cross for, for even for people that will do that? It's not there. Jesus died for our sins, all of our sins. Um, so if someone has professed Christ as their Lord and Savior, suicide is not a deal breaker. So I want you to hear that if, if you've been impacted by, by suicide. But, but here's the thing. Uh, what, what ends up happening when, when you hear about someone that that's happened with a family member and friends, what, what they always, what I hear, first thing I hear is, what, I wish I could have done more. I, I wish I had had one more conversation with them. Maybe if I had reached out to them one more time. There's always that what ifs and that if onlys. Um, I, I, so we're going to talk about this hope that we have for loneliness and discouragement. Now, suicide, there can be many, uh, many things that, that uh, cause that. One, there can, be, there can be some mental illness. There can be loneliness and discouragement. Uh, there can be all sorts of things uh, that, that can be going on there. But nonetheless, we're going to talk about this hope that we have in Christ. Um, one, one of the things, this series that I'm doing started last week and we'll do for another uh, three weeks, uh, we're going to be dealing with, the, like today, loneliness and discouragement, guilt, fear, shame, depression. We're going to be dealing with those things and the hope that we have in Christ uh, for those things. But here's the thing that I want you to hear loud and clear. Those things aren't from God. I want that to settle in for just a second. Loneliness, discouragement, guilt, fear, shame, depression, and you just add anything to the list that you want there, they're not from God. So if they're not from God, where are, where are they from? Well, they're from the enemy. Jesus said it this way. The thief, speaking of the devil, the thief, Jesus said, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to take us out. And he uses all sorts of things to do that. He loves loneliness, discouragement, guilt, fear, shame, and depression. He loves those things because it, it helps him to steal, kill, and destroy us. But Jesus goes on to say, but that's the, the thief comes to do that, but I've come that you may have life and have it abundantly, have it to the full. 
So we need to understand these things are not from God. So, so how do we combat those things? How do we receive hope in the midst of these things? That we have an enemy who, uh, and now there, you're going to see a word in my points today. There's a word that's in each one of my three points today, and the word is intentionally. And you'll, we'll get there in a second. But I want you to understand that we have an enemy that is intentional. He is intentional to steal, kill, and destroy us. He has a plan. He maps it out. He, he executes it. So he is intentional. So we must be, as the body of Christ, we must be intentional. The first thing, we can overcome loneliness and discouragement if we intentionally focus on eternal things. You know, um, another place in the scripture, Jesus says, and, and I've said it many times, in this world you're going to have trouble. That's what Jesus says. You're going to have trouble. It's not a piece of cake. There's going to be health issues, which we just prayed for this morning. There's going to be health issues. There's going to be financial issues. There's going to be relational issues. There's going to be hunger issues, physical needs. I mean, there's going to be all sorts of struggles that you go through but then he says, take heart, I've overcome the world. You're going to have struggles, but I've overcome those struggles. I've overcome the things that are difficult in this world. Colossians 3, Paul says it this way. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So one of the things I think that as we deal with Loneliness and discouragement is our, now this is, if you are in that category of being someone who is struggling with loneliness or discouragement, I'm not casting condemnation on you, I'm just trying to explain what's going on. We have our eyes fixed on us. We have our eyes fixed on us. Uh, there is that uh, woe is me mentality. And, and what we're hearing is, no, set your hearts and your minds on something else, on things above, not on earthly things, not on these struggles that are going on, but who you are in Christ. Intentionally focus on those things, on those eternal things. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 6, do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rut. Do we not do that? Do we not trust our, our 401k? Some of you are going, 401 what? <laughs> Do we not trust our, our health and our youth and our, our friends and our job and our education and our finances? I mean, we put our trust in these things, and, and Jesus is saying, those things go away. Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also that, those are the words of christ focus intentionally on eternal things that's one of the ways that we can overcome loneliness and discouragement um, in second corinthians paul says it this way for our light and momentary, tr momentary troubles. Now, I know that some of you are going, it doesn't feel too light. But when you look at things from an eternal standpoint, really and truly, I try to do that sometimes. If I get upset about something or whatever, you know, I try to go, okay, is this really going to matter eternally? Does this really matter that that dude cut me off in traffic? Not that I would ever get upset about something like that. <laughs> Some of you sinners may. <laughs> for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So fix our eyes not on what is seen. It's talking about this, this earthly stuff. But what is unseen, for what is seen is temporary, but for what is unseen is eternal. It seems to be that the, God's word is telling us, man, take your eyes off of yourself and all this stuff going on around you and fix them on Jesus and eternity. Now, that's 
That's a challenge. One of the ways we do that is just kind of a side note is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask, ask God to show us how. Just ask him. Lord, I, man, this stuff is just overwhelming me right now. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know. Just, Lord, show me how to fix my eyes on you. Show me how. And help me do it. Secondly, we can overcome loneliness and discouragement if we intentionally, there it is again, press into relationship with God. You hear me say this probably often, press into God, press into God, press into God. Well, because that's generally the answer for whatever is going on in our lives. Press into him. James says it this way, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Press into him and he'll press into you. But, it, but here's the thing. We generally press into other stuff, don't we? And, and I know there's some things, probably a little thing going ticker tape. Some of you older, younger people, get, well, older people will explain that to you. But you, you, if we, whatever we press into is what's pressed out in our lives. In my old computer days, that's the first thing they taught me when I was learning to program. They said, garbage in, garbage out. You write a bad program, you get a bad result. That's the way it works. But you, you write a good program, you get good results. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Are you lonely or discouraged? Press into God. Because he cares for you. That's what Scripture tells us. Seek first, Matthew 6. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So if we seek him and his kingdom, all this other stuff is going to take care of itself. All this other stuff. And, and probably, this is, y'all hear me say this a lot, but this is absolutely one of my favorite scriptures as I think of it many times when I'm weary, when I'm struggling. And Jesus says, and I can just... Picture him in your mind with his arms open. Where is that? Where is that? Is that Brazil? Where is that where they've got the, the Jesus up on the hill? Is that Brazil? Don't you love that? I, I wish Abilene had one of those on a hill somewhere looking over our city where he's just, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. I love that image of Jesus. I love that peace of my Savior. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Well, I, I, I know most of us kind of have an idea of a yoke, but one of the things we think of is animals, you know, yoked together to pull a wagon or whatever. But this is the picture that comes to my mind when I read that scripture. You got that, Lee? Yeah. That That is also a yoke, and this this gentleman there is is carrying water, and it helps. You can carry more weight that way. It distributes the weight, and you can carry more weight that way. But, but it's still heavy. It's still heavy. It digs into the back of your neck, I'm sure. And Jesus is saying, no, take my yoke. Let, let me have the weight. Let me carry it. Are you lonely and discouraged? Let, Jesus is saying, let me carry it. Let me carry it. Um. In Galatians 5, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. What Scripture tells us that what is our, what is our yoke of slavery? We're, we are slaves to sin and death. I mean, it's just, it's who we are outside of Christ. We, we are slaves. We are yoked to sin and death. Jesus says, no, take Take my yoke upon you, because my burden is light, and I, I will give you rest. Are we lonely or discouraged? Press into the relationship with God. And, and, and please hear me, church. Um, religion is not a relationship. So many people make that mistake that we think that uh, the institution of church and, uh, and all of the things we, you know, if we, as long as we say the right things, sing the right songs, and everything has to be at the right volume, and we have, you know, good, good comfortable seats and air conditioning and all that, then, then, you know, it's all good. It's like, no, 
That's, that's the institution of church. We're talking about pressing into God himself through Jesus Christ. Helps us to overcome loneliness and discouragement. And I would also add there, uh, how, how, well, how do we do that? Um, part of it is coming to church, you know, being, being in God's word, praying. Those are, those are things uh, how we can press into our relationship with God. But coming to church and being engaging with God's people. Now here, <coughs> here is the, here's the thing I need you to hear. Uh, we're all, every single one of us in this room, we're human beings. And we have the capacity to bless one another and to, and to be a pain in the rear to others. Are you hearing me? I, I, I talk to so many people that maybe they're starting to come back into church and they're like, you know, I hadn't been in church for 40 years because some knucklehead preacher or some knucklehead Christian did something to hurt me or my family. And I'm like, sounds to me like you put your faith in the wrong group. <laughs> because if you're counting on, on me to be your savior, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Disappointed. No, Jesus will never disappoint us. Place your faith in him, not, not a preacher, not an institution, not a denomination, none of those things, but in Jesus Christ. Because guess what? He hung on a cross for you. He, he loves you that much. And, and man, if he'll do that, he'll do anything for you. And he wants to be your friend. And lastly, we can, we can overcome loneliness and discouragement if we intentionally seek to serve others. Um, and again, please don't, if you are in that category of someone struggling with loneliness and discouragement, please don't hear this as condemnation because none of this is. But, but many times, part of our problem, as I said earlier, is we have our eyes fixed on us. Nobody likes me. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. Nobody talked to me when I was at church this morning. Uh, all, I mean, just... And I, I hear that a lot. Uh, there, sometimes I'll have a, a family or a person that has not been to church in a while, and, and on occasion, it's been a while, but on occasion I would call and say, hey, hey, I'm just checking on you. Are you okay? And they would, sometimes I would hear, you know, we were gone for two months and not one person called to see if we were okay. Check on us. Now, I'm, I know this is going to sound harsh, but my first thought is, who have you called to check on? Hello. Steve, is this on? It's on. <laughs> we want others to do for us what we don't do for them. Well, once again, we place our faith in, in Jesus Christ himself, but, but we need one another. I mean, we do, and, we're, and we need to understand we're not perfect. We're not Jesus. Sometimes we're going to do and say stupid things. Sometimes I'm going to do and say stupid things. I want to tell you right now, I will never say or do anything intentionally to harm you. I just won't, and I'm not saying I won't do or say something to harm you. I won't ever do it intentionally. Sometimes I may say something that hurts your feelings. I don't want to do that. I'm not trying to do that. But, but sometimes we do. Sometimes we're not sensitive. Jesus said, I mean, his home, as he, I mean, he's, he's getting ready to go hang on a cross for us. And he, first of all, he washes the disciples' feet. We talked about that a couple, two or three weeks ago. And, um, and then he, he goes to the cross for us. And so he's so anxious about that moment. It says in the, uh, in the garden that he sweat, literally sweat drops of blood. They didn't know this when they, when the, uh, when the uh, gospel writers wrote that, they just wrote what they, what they saw, what they knew. He sweat what literally drops of blood. Now we understand that's a medical condition. And when you become so overwhelmed and so anxious about some circumstances, uh, and I'm, I'm going to mess this up, doctors, if you're in the nurses, if you're in the room, but there's a condition where your, uh, your veins can rupture and the, and the blood can, can enter into your sweat glands, your sweat glands rupture or whatever, and they... 
And you can literally, and it's under extreme stress, and you can literally sweat drops of blood. The, the gospel writers didn't hey, you know what? I went to medical school, so I'm going to write this down. No, when they saw it happen, they're like, his sweat became like drops of blood because he knew he was fixing to be nailed to a cross for us. And yet, he just washed the feet of, of the disciple who turned him in. And the one who would say, I don't know the man. He just washed his feet. And then he goes to pray and he's sweating drops of blood and his, several of his disciples are sleeping. He asks them to pray, pray for me. He comes back, they're sawing some logs. And yet, he loves them. He still went to the cross. Did you know, you know perhaps, I don't know about you, perhaps I might have said, you know what, I just don't know about this. I was planning on dying for you guys. You can't even stay awake and pray for me. I, I, I'm not sure. But no, he still went to the cross. Intentionally. You want to you be freed? You want to have hope for loneliness and discouragement? Serve others. That's what Jesus said. Philippians, this is another one of my favorite scriptures, Philippians 2. I'll read this pretty quickly, but, I, but it's, it's, I want you to hear the, the, the heart of this passage. Do nothing, Paul says, out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. If we are lonely and discouraged, perhaps that's not happening for us. Each of you should look not only to your own interests. He's like saying, it's okay to take care of yourself, but you should also look to the interest of others. Your attitude, he says, should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Well, what, what kind of attitude is that? Who being in very nature God, he's God himself. He, was, he should have been exalted. He did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. He humbled himself, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as, as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death. Do you hear? He should have been high exalted, and yet he humbled himself even unto death. And then listen, this is important. So that's what happened. That's who Jesus is. Therefore, what do you, what do, you do when you see therefore? You go back and see what it's there for. We just read what it's there for, and then he said, therefore, since, since Jesus did this, since he humbled himself and became obedient to death, to death God exalted him. He exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Do we want to be, have hope and overcome loneliness and discouragement? We need to serve others. I ran across this video. It's pretty short, but I want you, it's powerful. I think it's powerful. I want you to watch this. Go ahead, Lee.
was more than a shirt and a cap. He shared the love of Jesus. You think in that moment, that young man who gave up his shirt and his cap, do you think he was lonely and discouraged? He was probably feeling very blessed. God is calling us to seek him and his kingdom and to humbly serve others. That's how we fulfill our purpose in life. That's how we overcome loneliness and discouragement. Press into him. Keep your eyes focused on what's eternal. And serve others. Take our eyes off of ourselves and put it on someone else. I'm not saying it's easy. Try it. Ask the Lord to empower you to do that if you're struggling. If you would just bow your head with me. Father, we want the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus. That's what we want. And Father, we don't do it for this purpose, but we also see that that you exalt those who humble themselves. Jesus, when you washed the disciples' feet, you said, you set us an example that we should do as you have done, and you said, you'd be blessed if you do this. That's what we want, Lord. We, I pray anyone this morning that is struggling, feeling lonely or discouraged, feeling that they don't, have anyone who cares. I pray, God, that you would move in their heart right now. I pray that you would provide someone in their life. God, I'm I'm here. I care. And I know there are others that care. Give these folks that are struggling with this, give them courage to reach out and just say, I need help. I need the hope that comes with Jesus. And it's in your precious name, Jesus, we pray it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, this is Pastor Jeff Hatcher with Wiley United Methodist Church in Abilene, Texas. I want to thank you for listening to this message from God's Word today. Uh, I want to remind you that you have a Savior. His name is Jesus, and he loves you. I also would like to, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to, to pray this simple prayer with me. Father, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I confess it. I repent of my sin, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to wash me as white as snow. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you prayed that prayer maybe for the first time today, I want to invite you to do four things. First of all, to share that decision you've made with a member of the clergy. Don't try to walk this journey alone. And then secondly, I invite you to be baptized. Jesus himself commanded us that we should celebrate our faith through baptism. And then I invite you to get into God's word. A book of John is a great place to start. And not because uh, somehow reading the Bible makes us a good person, but because there's life in God's Word. It's His inspired, holy Word. And then finally, I I invite you to find a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church to be a part of. If, If you have any questions at all, I just want you to know that I'm available. You can contact me at my email, jhatcher at wileymethodist.org. God bless you.